Hey, what's up everyone? So in today's video, we're gonna finish implementing the archery system. So we'll be able to aim and throw the arrow using the left mouse button. Also, we will have this smooth transition of the camera position. So before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's jump right into it. So first of all, we're going to add another input action so that we can check if we have pressed the left mouse button to shoot. And to do that, we need to open up this starter assets, which basically an input action asset. Let's double click on it. Then you will see this window that contains all of the actions like jump to jump. Also, we've added the aiming action from the previous video. Make sure to check it out. Let's create a new one. I'm going to call it shoot. Then let's select a binding, which is a trigger for the action. Select this now binding. Then under the path property, let's search for the left mouse button. Then let's click on it. Also, we need to change the action type. I'm going to change it from button to pass through. Also, let's change the control type to any. Then we need to save this asset. Now we will be able to check if we have pressed the left mouse button. Let's close this window and let's open up the starter assets inputs. Then we need to add another boolean to check whether we are shooting or not. Using public boolean. I'm gonna call it is shooting. Then we need to create a method under here. Using public void and make sure to call it on shoot then we could simply change the boolean is shooting but before that this method takes an input value let's call it value then we can access whether we are pressing the left mouse button or not using value dot is pressed then we can use this boolean in our third person controller script Recently, we've added this aim shoot function. Here we are checking if we are aiming and we are on the ground. In such case, we can check if we have pressed the left mouse button. Then we can throw an arrow by playing the animation. And to add that, we need to modify the animator controller. So let's go back to the player armature. Then we can open up this controller, which basically contains all of the animations of our player. So whenever we are aiming, we can play some kind of uh, shoot animation if we press the left mouse button. So first of all, we need to drag the new animation and it is called standing aim recoil. We've downloaded this one from the previous video. So let's drag it. Then let's make a transition from aim to recoil. And here we're going to add another parameter. Under the parameters tab, Let's add a new one. I'm going to call it shooting. And each time we set this shooting parameter to true, we're going to play this standing aim recoil animation. So let's select the uh, shooting parameter and true. Then we can go back to the idle state. And you don't need to add another condition. So once we throw the arrow, the player will transition back to his idle walk or run state then we can aim again and shoot also make sure to remove his exit time from this transition now we need to go back to the script and let's update the boolean that we have just created from the animator component using underscore animator then dot set boolean make sure to use the same name so I'm gonna copy it and let's change it using the input object underscore input. So this is an object that has the type starter assets inputs so that we can access this boolean is shooting. Let's go back to the third person controller and let's add dot is shooting. If we are pressing the left mouse button, it's going to be true. And if we release it, it's going to be false. Also, let's copy this line of code. 
and let's paste it under the else statement so we need to change this shooting parameter to false so whenever we release the right mouse button we will not be able to shoot that's why I've changed the shooting parameter to false and now we can aim also we can shoot using the left mouse button so we have the recoil animation that is played each time we hit the left mouse button the same thing if we are walking but we haven't added the logic to throw the arrow each time we play the recoil animation and to do that we are going to use an animation event basically we can call a function at a specific keyframe of this aim recoil animation so let's select it for example at this keyframe we can instantiate an arrow and push it forward using a rigid body component so we can go down here and you will see that we have this event section we can call a function by adding an event using this plus icon so go to the specific keyframe for example this one we're gonna throw the arrow once we reach this keyframe then let's hit this icon and we can set the function for example we can call it shoot or throw arrow we are going to create this function under the third person controller script so we need to select it from here and let's open up the third person controller script make sure to apply let's open it up and let's go down here and we need to make it public so that the animation can access this function void and we call it shoot for now I will just make a debug.log and let's write throw arrow then let's save it and yeah we have the message throw arrow under the console each time I press the left mouse button now we're gonna create the arrow and to do that I'm gonna use the arrow model that comes with the character if you go under Erika Archer Mesh and it is under here it is called Erika Archer Arrow you could also see it in the scene view but first I'm gonna unpack this prefab using right click prefab unpack completely and let's take the arrow model outside of it I'm gonna change the name to arrow then to apply physics to it first I'm gonna add a rigid body component or let's add a collider like a box collider then a rigid body component now we'll be able to push it for now I will leave the default settings then I'm gonna create a prefab out of it so that we can instantiate it I'm gonna add another folder using right click create folder let's call it prefabs which is a copy of the object we can drag it under the prefabs now we can use it and we can get rid of the arrow under the scene so don't worry we have the object you can double click on it to see it you could also change some settings like the collider and let's go back under the shoot function we're gonna instantiate the arrow but first we need to add a reference to it using public game object and let's call it arrow object also we're gonna need a reference to the point from where we are going to instantiate the arrow object using public transform and let's call it arrow point then let's go under the shoot function and let's use the instantiate method we give it the arrow object then the position which is the arrow point dot position then we need to set the rotation I'm gonna use the player rotation using transform dot rotation and this returns an arrow object that is created we can add a reference to it using game object I'm gonna call it arrow equals the instantiated object then we're gonna add some kind of force to push it forward by accessing the rigid body component using arrow dot get component 
and we're going to need the rigid body component and we have a built-in function that is called add force first we need to give it the direction I'm going to use transform dot forward then the force mode I'm going to use force mode dot impulse also I want to multiply this vector by 25 to increase the force value then let's save the script we need to add a reference to the arrow under the player armature let's reference the arrow object which is under the prefabs folder then we need to set a point and let's use the left hand of the character as the point from where we are going to instantiate the arrow so let's select the player armature then let's drag the left hand under the arrow point and let's hit play and there you go now we can aim using the right mouse button and we can throw the arrow but it's colliding with the walls maybe we need to change it to a trigger then we can check if we have triggered a wall in such case we're going to remove the rigid body component and to do that we can add another script and attach it to the arrow object so let's create it under the scripts folder using right click create c sharp script and let's call it arrow then let's attach it to the arrow object we can double click on it to open it up first i'm going to change the box collider let's check its trigger then let's drag in the arrow script we could also drag it to the object under the hierarchy then let's open it up in visual studio first i'm going to get rid of the start and the update methods then let's use the on trigger method so this is a built-in function that is called each time the arrow pass through a collider in such case we're going to remove the rigid body component using transform dot get component rigid body so we have the destroy method we can give it the rigid body component then it will destroy it and that's what we need also we can destroy the arrow after 10 seconds so I'm going to use a start method and let's use destroy game object and we're going to remove it after uh, 10 seconds you could also change this time later on now let's save this script and go back into unity and there you go now we can throw the arrow using the left mouse button also we can hit the walls as you can see we have the arrow inside it maybe we need to make it a little bit bigger so let's go back to the project first I'm gonna change the scale of the arrow let's change the scale to 2 and before I finish this video I'm gonna show you how you could easily switch between different camera positions so if we are aiming we're gonna zoom in a bit and that's very simple because we have this cine machine virtual camera that controls the main camera we can add another one and let's change the name to player aim camera then each time we start aiming we're gonna enable this one but first we need to change some settings for example let's change the field of view I'm gonna change it to 25 then we can add some kind of offset then we need to add a reference to these two objects under the third person controller script let's add public game object I'm gonna call the first one player follow camera and let's add the reference to the other one I'm gonna call it player aim camera which we're gonna reference from the inspector then under the aim shoot function under here we're gonna disable the player follow camera and enable the aim one using player follow camera dot set active false and enable the other one using set active true and if we stop aiming under the else statement we're gonna enable the player follow camera using set active true 
and disable the other one. Let's save our code. Then let's select the player armature and reference our objects. And the Cinemachine package will actually blend between the two positions, so we'll have some kind of smooth uh, movement. Let's hit play. And there you go, now we have another view whenever we are aiming. And once we stop, you see the camera goes to the first position. You could also change the speed of this transition, which we can set under the main camera. We have the Cinemachine Brain component. Let's change the default blend to a lower number, like 0.5. I think it's fine. And let's hit play again. And there you go. So I think that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. I appreciate that. And I will see you in the next one.